It started with a movement on the streets, then escalated into violence. And now, after a national vote with no result announced, Thailand's political stalemate is raising economic concerns. Just four months ago, the country was enjoying solid growth as the second largest economy in the region. There's substantial foreign investment in Thailand. For now, those heavily invested companies are not leaving, but some are putting expansion and further investment on hold. I think those that are committed are very much committed to the long term. With new investors, uh, there are other countries within the region that are now uh, possibly becoming more attractive to invest into. The all-important tourism numbers are lower than projected before the crisis. And the value of the Thai currency, the baht, is down too. The cost of the impasse is also impacting the government's finances. If the government wants to spend money, um, the process may take longer. Some of the projects which the government has in plan, some of the off budgets, they plan to spend a lot in the infrastructure that um, kind of suspended. Even when the protesters leave the streets of Bangkok down there and there's a new government in place, some smaller industries aren't going to rebound immediately. It's going to take them some time to get back to where they were before the unrest started. And that includes the technology sector, mainly hit by bigger companies that are cutting budgets out of concern for the future. When the political issue gets settled, we'll need another good six months to get on our feet again. Uh, but then even if it's ended on June, uh, I don't see a clear budget plan from the government, from the, uh, from the uh, enterprises. As these economic concerns grow, the mood of the protesters is still buoyant. But if the political stalemate continues for the long term, impacting foreign investment and there's less confidence in the Thai economy, the entire country will feel it. And there won't be much dancing in the streets. Scott Heidler, Al Jazeera, Bangkok.